solution was that of his jump shot. He could fade farther and hang longer than any player in the league from 1991 until he retired for good. As Fred Carter, one of Jordan's first NBA assistant coaches, found out there was no meaningful way to stop Jordan's jumper. There hasn't been a guard come in the NBA that has been able to turn the team around totally in the history of the game. You've got to find a way to stop Michael. Coach! Yeah. It's 6.45. you got 45 minutes of game time. Yeah, all right. Surprised he didn't try to tell me how to stop Michael. Or how, how good he was. I remember how good he was. After all, I was the assistant coach Michael's rookie year, and I remember how explosive he was. When he first came in the league, he was a player who used to slash, cut to the hole. Jordan, look at that! Holy cow! He was more of that flamboyant type of player that wanted to make a post to shout at everybody, wanted to embarrass everybody. That brash rookie telling me I have no chance that I couldn't beat him. Mm. Yeah, I know all about Jordan. All about him. But the Jordan of the day that scares me. It's scary just how good it is. Listen, a shot that I, I created and I perfected because double teams were coming so quickly. If I'm on a roll, it doesn't matter if you send a double team. I can react quick enough to get the fade away. Michael came back, we each were his game as getting him down court early, getting to a quick post up, and getting his jump shot back. He's learned that turnaround jump shot, reestablished that turnaround jump shot that's been really the strength of his game. Michael must have learned the fadeaway in between balls and strikes during baseball. Gotta find a way to stop that fadeaway. If you go in there thinking you're gonna stop Michael Jordan, uh, you're gonna be in for a long night. You gotta pray and hope he misses a lot of shots. So fire time by Michael Jordan! He gets the ball real easily and, and real quick, and he spins and turns. And once he's hitting that shot so well, like he's doing now, it's, it frustrates you a lot. He gets so high in the air right there, he's fading. I'm not even George Miller's can get to him in Georgia 7-7. In the past, physically, he just dominates you so much. Now he sets you up better. Uh, he lures you better. He has that killer instinct, and uh, that's what makes him so deadly. When Michael Jordan gets down low, I don't care who's playing him, he's almost impossible one-on-one -on -one to stop got to find a way to stop Michael. Maybe I'll hide his Gatorade. Nah. Jordan Cologne? Nah. The reps might like this. Maybe it's the shoes. Nah. The Jordan rules. Maybe there's a clue in here. Back in the late 80s and uh, early 90s when we had the Jordan rules, uh, it was simply based on the fact that he had the ball in his hands so much. We denied him the basketball every opportunity we got. Uh, when he got the ball, we double, triple teamed him. The implementation of the Jordan rules Three guys are going to be around him at every turn. Uh, we wanted fatigue to be a factor, if possible, with a bionic human being. The implementation of the Jordan rules. A lot of people question, you know, am you know, I finishing ball games and, and that I'm tired or whatever. I don't think it's more so that. I think it's that everybody's taken the, the Jordan rules and extended it even further. They have tried to uh, continuously get the ball out of my hand. And for me to go against one against three, it's not in my best interest, not in the team's best interest. In my younger days, yes, I would have won one against three. But in logic terms, it's easier to move the ball around and hope that you know someone's going to make this defense pay. During the Jordan rules, uh, uh, they weren't running the, tri uh, the triangle offense. And what the triangle offense did was uh, it does not allow you to double him as much because there's constant movement now. That's 
why I think he's still as, as great as ever, because you have to play him one-on-one -on -one most of the time now. I was a jump shot shooter, but I never had to rely upon that skill because I could get to the basket. Yeah, well, now that the defenses are collapsing as, as Detroit did for years, so I got to stop and pull up. I got to utilize the jump shot. I got to take what the defense gives me. I'm not going to go against the grain. Can't believe the greatest player in the game has changed this game and is still the greatest. Do you think that happened by accident? Or do you think he worked every year to add something to his game so that his greatness would become even greater? He's turned into a jump shooter and he's turned into a great one. Well, he's the best post-up player in the NBA. I mean, there's no question about that. There are no secrets. Uh, there, are, there are no answers or no cures to God and Michael Jordan. Should have kept my TV job.